Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome back to the Humble Servants Homestead, guys. Today, we have you inside for a real treat. Now, a lot of you have asked, and boy, have we heard the outcry of wanting to see what we do behind the scenes when we're not gardening, or even some of the processes that we have in place when we're processing the produce that we do harvest from the gardens. So my commitment to you guys is to take you behind the scenes and along with me this year on things that I accomplish in the kitchen. Now, going into 20 and 20, 2024, one of the things that I said that I wanted to do as a personal thing for my family is to stop purchasing bread from the store. A lot of you may not know that the career that I had before homesteading was bakery management. So I spent about 15 years in the bakery industry, a lot of it being in management. And of course, a lot of the things that I was able to do in my day-to-day -day job was mix things from scratch, bakery breads and rolls and desserts and wedding cakes and all of those things. So today I'm going to bring you along with me while I make a simple uh, breakfast item that I try to keep on stock for my family to be quick and convenient and easy for us to access when we're short on time and on the go. So today we are going to be making some easy bagels. Okay, come along. Now these easy bagels are very easy. They're actually only five ingredients involved in this process. I will have the uh, ingredients linked below because I've pre-measured out mine but I don't want to give you the measurements because I've actually doubled the recipe so that I can make two batches in one so I'll give you the name of the ingredients but I'll give you the amount of the ingredient that you would need for a single batch in the description box so starting off we have our yeast this is instant yeast not the kind that you have to activate instant yeast salt and sugar already measured out and I also have my warm water um, and then we need of course some flour now flour I did not measure out and I'll tell you why typically a lot of times when you are baking your um, thing when you're measuring flour is to just scoop 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 and a lot of times that'll give you the wrong measurements if you're not careful so right here what I have is my flour but with my flour, I've sifted it already so that there aren't any lumps inside. And what I'm going to do is simply loosely scoop it and level off my scoop. Okay? So that would be one cup of flour. And so I'm going to do the same thing for the amounts that I need for this recipe. And we'll get started. Okay, guys. And so I have my flour all measured out and in my bowl today we will be using a stand mixer now if you don't have a stand mixer or a KitchenAid or anything of that nature that's totally fine you could do this recipe and knead it by hand but I feel like I've graduated above kneading by hand at this point so I'm going to use my stand mixer so we have our flour already in our bowl and we're going to combine the rest of our dry ingredients in there which will be our sugar our salt and our instant yeast, okay? And I left a little salt in here. And we're gonna put this baby on the stand mixer and let that mix on the first speed until everything is incorporated. And then at that point, we'll add our wet ingredients, which will be our water, okay? Come along. Okay, guys, and also one more thing that I need to add. If you want your stand mixer to last a lifetime, when mixing dough in your stand mixer, always use the lowest speed possible to give you the desired result. And by that I mean when I'm attaching my dough hook and turning on my mixer, I'm going to turn this mixer on one to mix the dry ingredients and also when I incorporate the water. After it looks as though it has formed a dough and I'll show you exactly what that looks like but after we get to that step and it has formed the dough, I'm going to just turn this on speed two. This mixer has 10 speeds, but I'm only working with speed one and two throughout this whole process, okay? So keep that in mind. But I'll show you. We've just turned on our dough or our flour at this point mixture. 
and we're just gonna let that incorporate all of our dry ingredients okay so that'll be maybe one minute two minutes tops and then we'll start to pour in our water okay guys and now that our dry ingredients look to be thoroughly incorporated together I'm gonna start adding our water And there you go. Our water has been added. Now we're going to let that mix until everything is well incorporated and it's starting to form an actual dough. Because as you can see right now, there's a lot of flour around the sides and it's more like a paste in the middle. But that's okay. It'll start to form a dough as it goes along. And as you guys can see, the flour, for the most part, is incorporated. You still have a little bit that's still left around the sides, but you can start to see we're still on speed one. It's been about three minutes, and most of the flour is incorporated. So we're going to stop the mixer, and we're going to check the consistency of the dough. And that still feels a little bit wet, so what we're going to do is add a little bit more flour. And I'm going to actually just add maybe one, one-fourth of a cup of sifted flour. And keep in mind the flour is lighter. And it will also vary by the conditions of your house. If your house is warm or humid and things of that nature. So take into consideration that as well. But I'm looking into the bowl. And I can actually see the bottom of the bowl down there. And the dough is beginning to form an actual dough and beginning to look like a ball. So I'm actually going to now turn the mixer up to speed number two. Because like I said, it seems like most of the flour is incorporated. And I could actually see the bottom of the bowl. I don't know if that's making sense to you, but let me show you again. If we're looking inside of the mixer, we could see the bottom of the bowl. You see the silver down there? I'm actually able to see everything incorporated together. So I'm going to turn this up to speed number two. So we have been going for about four minutes. So what we're going to do is stop our mixer. And we're going to do a window pane test. And by that I'll show you. We're going to take a piece of the dough. And we're going to stretch it. And if it's able to stretch without tearing and as you can see we have holes so if the dough is able to stretch without tearing it's ready to be moved along to the next step but because this is not we're going to let this mix for another two minutes okay you guys so it has been two minutes we are going to stop our dough and give a check see and right off the top I can tell that we're good to go. Okay. Give that a quick little spin so that I'm able to get it out in one good ball. And as a matter of fact, let me just disconnect everything so that I'm able to get this on out. I made two batches of dough together. I want this all to come out in one big ball so that I can evenly divide. Give that a good little rounding. Oh, you guys can't see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Slide the mixture down. We have our ball of dough here, and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to return that half to the mixer because we're 
we're getting ready to do something extra special with that one, okay? So let's ball this one up pretty quickly. And actually, son, can you help me out? Can you tilt the camera down so they can see me balling this up? We still can't see. Let's see, we'll move it back to right here. If you can hold us right here. And I'm just going to ball this one up like this, guys. Okay? And then that way I'm able to divide it in half, in half, and in half. Okay, so that's one, two, in half, three, four, and then this half, in half, quarter, and quarter. And there we go. Actually, that feels like, there we go, there we go. Okay, so we have eight equal parts here. We're gonna take a little bit of our flour and flour this surface. Because that's actually where our dough balls will go. Okay, and so while we have that going, what I am going to do with the other half that's in here, we're going to be a making a cinnamon raisin bagel with that. So I have raisins here and some cinnamon here. So I'm going to be using about a teaspoon of cinnamon and these raisins, let me see. It's one, one box of raisins. So one box of raisins one teaspoon of cinnamon, and that's going to go into the mixer again with this dough while we are rounding up these balls, okay? So, stay tuned. Okay, so while we're letting our cinnamon and raisin mix together, we're just going to Round these into some circles and let them rest. And all I'm sitting here doing is just really tucking and patting. Tucking all of your corners intentionally. And grabbing them while I'm rounding. And there you have a nice round ball. And we'll do that with all. Notice our surface is floured because our dough is a soft dough and we don't want them to stick. But I'm just grabbing. Slightly flattening, and I'm tucking with my finger, grabbing and balling, and there we have it. So I'll do that with all of these, and I'll actually stop this because remember, our dough was already mixed. Get these nice and balled up, slightly flattened. And I mean, they don't have to be exact, but you do want to try and make sure that you have them even, evenly measured out. So we'll remove your cinnamon raisin dough. And we'll do the exact same thing. So let's get this out of our bowl. There we have it. Give it a nice little ball and round. And we're going to cut it the exact same way. We just did our plane. So in half, in half again, in quarters, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And keep in mind the bagel recipe, if you do not double it like I did, will give you eight bagels, okay? So, 
get these lightly floured as well on the top and we're going to round them the exact same way okay one two Keep in mind, we did use instant dry yeast, so that's our key to not having to sit all day and wait for these to rise and be ready for the next step, okay? So get these rounded and then we're ready to move along. on the top and give them a slight press because this is the part where we're going to make it do what it does okay so you take your ball poke a hole with your finger can you see take a ball poke a hole with your finger and then we're going to swirl until that hole grows now only you know how you like your bagels i like for my hole in my middle of my bagel to be defined so i make this hole about one and a half to two inches wide like that okay and there you have it and once we do that we're going to actually rest these on our pan hold on let me get our pans So we have our pan, and this pan has uh, Mrs. Anderson's uh, baking reusable uh, liner on here. So I find these pretty easy to work with. It keeps me from not having to purchase parchment paper over and over again. And um, I find this brand very durable. I've had these for several years, and they're still holding up. So bakery pan, bagel. We're going to do that for all eight bagels. So let's get started. Give it a swirl. Pick it up and twirl it. And there we go. Now while we're doing this, I've already turned on my oven. I'm preheating my oven to 415 degrees so that it'll be ready to go by the time the bagels have rested for about 20, 25 minutes or so. And again, I'm just pushing a small hole in the middle and then working that hole with my fingers. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, they're just bagels and we're gonna eat them, you know, so. Last but not least and there we have it all eight of our bagels prepped and ready I'm gonna get so these cinnamon we'll... raisin bagels shaped and on their pans and covered up and we'll be right back okay cinnamon raisin And these bagels make medium sized bagels, um, serving size one bagel per person. So, very delicious if you guys are making some breakfast sandwiches with them, which is what we tend to do, especially on Saturdays when it's hectic around here and we're crunched for time and have to go. Um, that's our go to. So, Okay, guys, and as you can see, it's as simple as this right here. We're almost in the home stretch, just resting 
boiling baking left. So give me a second to get these all prepped and on our pans and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, and also one of the steps that I forgot to mention is to make sure that you sprinkle a little bit of flour on your pans prior to putting your bagels down, and that's just so that they don't stick. Um, and so I went back and I did that process for all 16 bagels, and so now what I'm going to do is get them covered up with plastic wrap to help to keep that uh, heat in while they're rising, and um, I'll put my flour sack cloth on top of that. So just... Had to come back in and mention those tips to you. Okay, and we're good to go. We're going to let that sit for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll be right back. So we are now almost ready to move to the next step. My timer has about 12 more minutes on it um, of the bagels resting, and so I wanted to start prepping some other things to make sure that they were ready about the same time that the bagels are finished resting. So what I have right here is a pot of water. Now, I've added eight cups of water to this pot, and I'm actually going to turn it on. So that it can begin to get hot and um, almost start boiling. Now, we are going to boil our bagels. We're going to boil them for one or two minutes per side. And so, um, yeah, this is the pot in order for us to do that. But what I like to add to my pot, and I find that it adds to the silky shine of the bagels on the outside and that chewy but crispy crust on the outside, is molasses. Now, I... Um, make sure that I use unsulfured molasses, but I add one tablespoon to about two quarts of water. So we're going to get that started now. And I just turned the water on. So let me get my molasses in there. And you just give that a nice little swirl. And we are going to... Let that water heat up. Oh, it smells so delicious. I love molasses, guys. We're going to let that water heat up while we're waiting for the next 10 minutes or so for our bagels to be ready for us to start boiling, okay? So, I'll be right back. And also, guys, our oven is preheating to 415 degrees. Now, your oven may cook a bit differently, so... Um, with this being your first time baking these bagels with this recipe, kind of gauge how long it takes your bagels to cook in your specific oven. But for me, 415 degrees is the perfect temperature for me to bake my bagels. As you okay. can see, there is bubbles coming from our water because it is ready. One more minute on our timer. And we are prepped and ready to get this bagel boiling party started. So... As soon as our timer goes off, the first bagel will start to go into the water, okay? And there we have it. Let's turn that timer off. And guys, as you can see, that molasses has this water a beautiful dark amber brown color. And so let's get our bagels dunked and ready. And your bagels should float. That's a telltale sign that they are ready to go your bagels should be floating and we're just going to let those go for two minutes each side okay so now that bagels are in the water we're just going to let those stay for two minutes and then we'll flip them on the other side okay guys and two minutes 
half past and we are flipping our bagel and if you notice mine aren't perfectly rounded and that is perfectly fine still definitely edible it's not like we're going to be putting these out on a bakery shelf so hey my family loves them they're going to eat them and enjoy them and so am i and that's all that matters so let those go for another two minutes and we are ready to take those out and move to the next batch and we'll do the same process for these those bagels and the other batch that i have as well because remember i did a double batch so that's all it is to it okay and our two minutes are up and so we're going to remove these and get the next batch going Again, remember your bagels should be floating. There we have it. And two minutes on the timer, and we're going to flip in just two minutes. And we are flipping. And with these particular uh, bagels, I was going to make all of them plain, but I've had a special request from my kids to make a few of them with everything seasonings on them. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This beautiful bagel seasoning here, you can pick that up. They do sell it, but it has everything in there that um, they put on everything bagel. So I'm going to sprinkle a couple of them with this seasoning right here when this batch is done. And guys, this batch is in fact done. We're going to get them on the pan and on to the next step. And for those that may be wondering, if you do not have molasses to put into the water, you could use sugar, that's totally fine. You could use honey, that's fine as well. But for me, I just prefer the taste of the molasses. And so what you see me doing here is just giving this a generous little sprinkling of everything bagel seasoning. Okay, and so now we are going to get our timer set to 25 minutes and we are going to get these bagels in the oven and that is it bagels are now in the oven and so our timer is set for 25 minutes and we will be back to show you the finished result and so while those bagels are now in the oven I am also going to start prepping the cinnamon raisin bagels, but what I'm going to do, because they're not going in at the same time as the other bagels, I'm going to wait until there's about uh, 12 minutes left on my timer before I get started dipping the cinnamon raisin bagels, because you do want to make sure that while you are um, dunking the bagels in the hot water, you want to have them go directly into the oven immediately after you're done you don't want there to be a time lapse in between the time that you boil the bagels and you bake the bagels because that will mess up the consistency and timing in your yeast being activated and that will result in a, a more dense and hard bagel that's not chewy in the center so i'm going to time it closer to 12 minutes before i start dunking the cinnamon raisin bagels now if you're only making one batch then of course this would be your downtime and your rest time but for me i make two batches so that's the process that i'm going to follow and that's what you should follow too if you're uh, double batching your bagels okay so i'll be right back around 12 minute mark so now we're back and as you can see our timer actually has nine minutes on it um 
I forgot that I had turned my water down, so I've now turned it back up. And so I was trying to wait a couple minutes before it got hot enough to start boiling our bagels. But we're about nine minutes from the first batch being done in the oven. And so I'm going to get my cinnamon raisin bagels boiling right now. And it looks like these are probably rested a little bit too much because they are, or maybe I didn't put enough flour under the bagel. But that one, and actually this one, And be gentle, guys, when you're removing them from the pan because you do want your bagels to keep their shapes. But, yep, we're going to, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. When I take these out of here, you can see where I um, messed up the shape on these. I guess because they poofed a little bit too much, and that's why I said you have to time it perfectly. And if you let them sit for about 25 minutes or so um, of resting time, to 30 minutes tops, 25, 30 minutes, you're ready to boil and you're good to go. But anything further than that, and you run the risk of them being overproofed on the pan, and you don't want that. So, But we're going to let these boil. we got maybe, what, another minute and a half, and then we're going to flip them. But these cinnamon raisin bagels are actually awesome, awesome, awesome. And who knew they could be so easy to make at home yourself? Even the plain bagels, the bagels, period. So by the time we're done baking here, you're going to have the confidence to bake your own bagels at home. One less thing you'll be purchasing from the store. And these bagels are ready to be flipped. And as you can see, the texture on the back, that's why I was telling you, I know that they're overproofed. You see the wiggly lines from where my fingers were messing with the dough, peeling them off the pan. But that's okay, they're still edible. But you just want to be mindful of your timing so that you'll make sure that your bagels stay uniform, unlike these right here that are a little bit overproofed, but still edible nonetheless. And so another minute or so, and these will be coming out of the pot. Okay, you guys, and our two minutes have passed, and I am going to take these up out of here. You can definitely see the size difference in the bagels going in versus coming out. So these are overproofed. So next time I'm going to have to work a little bit quicker. Okay, so those are in. Let those go for two minutes and then we'll give them a flip for two minutes and then they'll be coming out as well. Okay, bagels are getting ready to get flipped. Okay, guys, and so we are taking the last of them out. And notice that the bagels are a little bit wrinkly. That's pretty uh, fine. That will straighten itself out once we put these bagels in the oven. And so that's what we're getting ready to do right now. And so we are going to put these bagels in the oven. As well as take these out because they're ready. Get our timer set. And guys, have a look. 
Aren't those beautiful? Now that our bagels are out of the oven, our second set is in. They still have about 22 minutes to bake. I'm going to get these off of this pan and onto this resting um, area so that air can circulate around the complete bagel because we do not want them to sit on the pan and cool off and get soft on the bottom. We want them to stay crispy on all sides. So let's get our bagels off okay, there, guys. And so <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> nice and beautiful bagels. And so we're going to, whew, we're going to let those cool off. But as you could hear that crisp. That's what we want, right? And so we're going to let those cool off. Of course, we still have about 20 minutes on the ones that are in the oven. And guys, that's it. That's it and that's all. Easy bagels. And we are, what, less than a minute from being an hour and a half into this recipe from start to finish. So I have some maple sausage that I've taken out of the oven that we will be enjoying tomorrow morning with these bagels, guys. And... It's going to be lovely. I may do a recipe a video for that as well because we do owe you guys one. So stay tuned for that one. But thanks for stopping by the Humble Servants Homestead, guys. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Hope this video inspired you guys to get into your kitchen and make some of these easy bagels. And stay tuned for more cooking videos coming from the Humble Servants Homestead. Have a blessed day.